welcome to another in our continuing series of discussions on the scriptures. Our topic today is the book of Acts, specifically chapter 1. Joining me for our discussion are members of the Faculty of Religious Education. To my left, Professor Jeffrey Marsh, Professor of Ancient Scripture, Professor Robert Millett, Professor of Ancient Scripture, Professor Camille Franck of the Department of Ancient Scripture, and I'm Andrew Skinner, Dean of Religious Education. Well, we're uh, with the saints in the first chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, we're just about to see the Savior ascend into heaven. What uh, meaningful things do we learn from Luke's account of the ascension, say, in verses uh, 9 through 11? What are some important ideas that we pick up from Luke's recounting of the ascension? Well, this is obviously a type of the second coming. Excellent. That he'll come down from heaven. There's no deception in this. We'll all see him simultaneously. He will come as ye have seen him go into heaven. Uh, that's, I think that's an excellent point. What else? Uh, how about the law of witnesses? Mm. Who's there? Two. Two, two angels, mm -hmm. two angelic mm -hmm. beings. Dressed we talked white. about the law mm -hmm. of witnesses mm -hmm. uh, at the sepulcher during mm -hmm. uh, that uh, first Easter morn. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I'm fascinated by, I guess, uh, just because I'm interested in in the uh, the people that surrounded the Savior, but we do learn that the men that were there, the members of the quorum of the twelve apostles, minus one are from Galilee. And uh, I think tradition tells us uh, that uh, Judas was the only apostle that wasn't from the Galilee. It was from Judea. From Judea. From Judea. Probably Cariot, huh? Yeah, the, the village of Cariot, because that's the meaning of, of his Cariot. surname, uh, Yehuda, Judas, or Judas Judah, of Cariot. Ish Cariot, meaning man of Cariot. Sure, okay. Uh, we quickly then, for after the ascension then, we quickly uh, move to this scene of the first church meeting after the ascension and uh, one week exactly from the day of the resurrection exactly. which changes again the day of from the beginning it was the seventh day that was worshiped now it is the first day of the week where we worship, reckoning the Sabbath which I right. think is a fascinating thing to sit in a church meeting on a Sunday and say, why am I here today? It is just by our being there, we bear witness of the resurrection. Of the resurrection. That's an excellent point. Thank you. This is, this is an unusual kind of a meeting, though, because... Well, first of all, where are they? They're in, Mar they're in Mary, the mother of John Mark's home, in an upper room that I think tradition holds is the same place they had held the Last Supper. Last Supper, sure. Yeah. And who's, who's there? Uh, obviously, the apostles are there, and we have them listed. But who else? Which Luke shows his concern on a continual basis, both in the gospel and in his sequel, the Book of Acts, for women folk in the church. Uh, and Camille is is nodding her head because she has noticed that the women are there, and and one special woman is there. In fact, I think this is the last mention of this particular woman in the scriptures. Who is it? Mary the, the mother, mother of Mary. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mary the mother of Jesus. From this point on, we don't hear of Mary. We, there are lots of traditions that talk about where Mary went. Well, it's, it's, it's almost as if we're now making a link yeah. from the four Gospels, where she played obviously a terribly significant role. Yeah. It's almost as if we're now passing the torch, in a sense, to the leadership of the church. You know, Link, uh, Luke has some special moments as well with Mary because it's his gospel that records all the things she kept in her heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how would he have known that if she kept them in her heart? He, he makes very, very much meticulous care to note her throughout this whole story. Sure. Well, what do we know about Luke? He's a physician. Okay. That means he, we will often see him attending to detail uh, physical the, details that the other gospel writers, yeah, especially in the atonement, Luke is the one that mentions he bled mm -hmm. from every pore. He's interested in the physical effects of the atonement mm -hmm. on the Savior. The birth the, of Christ is mentioned. He did, he's not clearly. mentioned in the saga. I mean, it's a, kind of just a hint of him back in chapter 16 when he begins in his writing to say we. That's right. Out of that, the blue, we. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. The first mention of the pronoun we occurs in Acts chapter 16, I think it's the 10th verse or somewhere mm -hmm. As there. a companion of Paul. As a companion, but so we know he's a companion of but, but Paul. But maybe that's just where he entered the gospel saga. Could be. Could I think be. we'd say this too, that uh, 
that Luke chapter 1 um, begins with what seems to be almost Luke's statement of appointment as a gospel writer. It's as if he's saying, there are other stories, tales, mm -hmm. writings about the Savior, but I'm, I, I, as the JST adds, uh, as, a, as a legal administrator, as a messenger of God, I'm going to now set them down. It implies he's been assigned to do this yeah. by the church. Yeah. What I like about Luke's testimony as well is the fact that he's going to other eyewitnesses, he's going to eyewitnesses to get this. There's no indication that he was himself an eyewitness of the Gospels. Right. And it, it tells those who did not know and see Jesus during his ministry, they can have as fervent a witness and testimony of Jesus Christ, if not more so than some of those that actually did that's right. And it's one of the gifts of the Spirit is to have faith to believe on the words of those who right. know. Yeah. Yeah. Verses 12 through 26, the last, uh, the second half of the first chapter of Acts, summarize for us uh, these first church meetings. Uh, we don't know whether it's one continuous meeting or whether it's two separate meetings. Uh, verse 15 uh, begins by saying, and in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and it could well refer to the to this very first church meeting the week after the ascension, or it, it could it, be another. And it could be, like you're suggesting, I think, that that much of the business of choosing that new apostle, as we would come to, was in a later meeting yeah. among just the twelve. And, and I think that that's the point that we focus on. What's the major concern of the quorum during the uh, uh, days immediately following uh, the Savior's ascension. The filling of Judas's. Yeah. We've got to have. We don't have 12. In the That's court. right. We've got to have. Look at the description of those in the meeting. In verse 1, they were all of one accord. Verse 5, they were devout. Verses 9 through 11, they come from numerous places. This is a great gathering of saints. They come from numerous places, and they're going to meet now, and the Spirit will come over them, and they'll have some great experiences because of it. Now, you, you, are, you are reading from chapter, 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 chapter two, 2, verse 1. All right, let's, just, let's just conclude uh, our discussion of, of chapter 1 by, by ferreting out how it is that the apostles go about filling the vacancy. If I could share a quick story that, that I, I first heard from, from uh, Elder Harold B. Lee many years ago. He told a small group of us sitting around him asking questions. We asked him to talk to us about succession in the presidency. He talked to us a good 30 or 40 minutes about it, and after he had explained that it's always the senior apostle who becomes the president of the church, Brother Lee then said, you might be interested in knowing how an apostle is chosen. He said, well, yes. He said, well, quite often it comes as the president of the church invites nominations from members of the Twelve. Brother Lee said, let me tell you, let me tell you a story that, uh, that demonstrates that principle. 